He sits in this chair. He has sat in this chair uh, very frequently. He's been a longtime friend of this program. He pours his heart out into the microphone and also gives you straight unvarnished opinions about the sport of football that has placed him in many different spots in his career. And now he joins us as the host of his own show that I'm excited uh, for him to tell you all about, as well as getting set for another season, talking college football and more for the worldwide leader in sports. Our friend Ryan Leaf back here on the Rich Eisen Show, this time as a guest as opposed to a guest host. How you doing, Ryan? I'm good, Rich. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Excited excited to be on the show. Okay, so go for it. Press release is out. You've been tweeting that you got great news about your professional career. You've got the floor. What do you What do you got, Ryan? Well, let, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with this. Simply, uh, I, I interviewed for for this job mm-hmm. um, a few months ago, and um, when they called to offer me it, um, they said the biggest selling point for me was my um, guest hosting turns on, on your show. Mm. Um, and so again, you know, this more than, more than anybody, but how grateful I am for you for, for the platform, the opportunity, because this is, this is where me and the family had, had hoped to go. We hope to have our own sports talk show that, uh, you know, really dives into the world of sports as well as, you know, kind of the life I lead now. And so we, we came up with the name called, uh, the straight line with Ryan leaf. And, uh, it, uh, it has a, a fitting ring to it in terms of how we'll be talking about football and sports and betting, as well as you know my life and 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 what your audience has been able to hear over the last you know three years of me hosting your show. Dude, look, uh, I've told this to you many times. It's not just you know you, you, you could sit and anyone in front of a microphone. It's what somebody does with the microphone, and obviously you telling your stories about your career and how you wound up where you wound up and why you have wound up where you currently are. That's what people dig. They, you know, uh, th- that's why people uh, flock to um, any video that you're pouring your heart out. Um, and so uh, congratulations on that. So how can people see this? When, what time, what day of the week? What do we got? When, when's a straight line? All right, yeah, so we we're going to be uh, four days a week right now, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The Wednesday show is going to be a college football show um, based uh, mostly. And then Monday, uh, Thursday, and Friday are going to be focused on the NFL, of course, during NFL season. You know, we're going to. Uh, dive into that aspect of things. Excited to talk about that. You can right now, you can check it kind of like what you guys do on YouTube or social media and anywhere yeah. that you get your podcast until we have our distributor in place. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, our association with NBC Sports uh, with points bet will uh, will allow for maybe uh, your old partner Peacock to get involved. Okay. So we'll, we'll see. Well, right now, we're uh, we're excited where we're at and uh, and we launch the show tomorrow. And you can watch tomorrow. it anytime. It's not Damn. Gonna, it's, so it's announced yeah. today and you're doing it tomorrow. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're uh, we're kind of a startup. Uh, um, we're uh, we just built a studio in Manhattan. Um, you, you know, uh, the way my boss puts it, we're we're flying the plane while we build it, and, uh, <laughs> and I kind of like that. You know, I like that uh, they had saw me and they saw somebody who has kind of been a mercenary over the last you know three or four years working for pretty much everybody, and they said uh, this guy wants to build something with us, and we're gonna we're gonna do it together. Well, congrats on that, Ryan Leaf. Terrific. And uh, so while you uh, build the plane while you fly it, let's put your seat in the upright position and talk some football right here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, college football, let's start with that, Ryan, with you. Um, Tell me why it won't just be Alabama and Georgia playing for the whole shooting match again. You got something for me on that? That's tough. I think, you know, you clearly saw the two best teams playing on on Saturday. Uh, Georgia just didn't have to really reinvent themselves after losing the entire defense to the NFL in the first round. And then Alabama has arguably the best offensive and defensive players on the football field. If you are a Texas fan, uh, just just don't watch the game. <laughs> wow. 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 All right. <laughs> So just McConaughey home, needs to avert his watch eyes. Some other great college football. Kentucky, Florida is a good one you could watch, but don't, don't, don't do it. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Check out, check out uh, uh, maybe USC Stanford uh, on, on Saturday night. That that might be one to, that will uh, that you'll be excited by. But yeah, it's, it could be ugly. I, I I even I even offered a score of like sixty three to twenty. Ooh. So um, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. 
And I think Steve Sarkeesian has gone into uh, this week trying to lower expectations. He understands that he's like, you know, this 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 team will not be defined by this game. You know, he, he knows Nick Saban really well, and he knows what this could look like uh, when it plays out. This team won five games a year ago. They lost to Kansas, right? They haven't improved that much in terms of a roster turnover. I think the young quarterback's going to struggle against the likes of Will Anderson in that defense. So, yeah, it could be a long day for the Longhorns. What's it there. like What's it like in a meeting room or a film room when everybody in the room knows, oh, God, um, that matchup's a problem for us. Oh, gosh, that's going to be an issue for us. And a coaching staff just knows, you know, it's got to be one of those heavy, any given Saturdays. What in the world is that like, Brian? It's 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 a tough one, right? When you're looking around the the room, when you're when you're in there with your staff meeting, and you're going like, you look at Will Anderson, and you're like, how how can we stop him? If we, I mean, we can't put five guys on him, then everybody else is gonna gonna kill us, right? I mean, it's it's absolutely uh, decimating to like <laughs> to like your uh, your optimism about something, but. Like anything, and I and I think you know when Oregon walked into the horseshoe a year ago against Ohio State, right? No one in the world gave them a chance. They lost Kayvon Thibodeau, their best player, uh, Justin Flo, uh, one of their other best line, uh, linebackers on the defensive side. Offensively, they've never been seen as a team that can overly dominate or out out shoot somebody in a in a shootout with the likes of, and they went in and beat them, right? So that's that's the example. This one's at home, right? This one is in Austin in front of a, a ruckus crowd, big noon kickoff on Fox. You know, it's, it's, there's a big hoopla to it. And I remember when this schedule came out two years ago, you know, right after the uh, exodus by Texas from the Big 12 to the SEC. And, I mean, this is going to give them a real good idea of what the SEC is going to look like. And I don't know what division they're going to be in, but it, you, you would assume they're going to be in the SEC West. Um, and so this is, this is a, a yearly matchup that you're going to see play out in real time. Brian Leaf, uh, host of his new show, The Straight Line with Ryan Leaf on Points Bet, uh, which debuts tomorrow uh, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. What's going on, do you think, in your alma mater and Pac-12 country? You know, uh, we had David Shaw on a couple of weeks ago, and, you know, and whenever you tell a coach, hey, hey, do you circle this game? Do you circle that game? You know their answer is going to be, we do it just one game at a time. But, you know, Lincoln Riley and USC coming in with USC bolting for the Big Ten, this would be a great time for Stanford to strike a blow for the Pac-12. Um, what do you think is going to happen with this conference and what's going on with your alma mater right now, Ryan? Well, you know, you, you look at you look at uh, this matchup, this early season matchup that happens every single year, and it's, it's kind of a litmus test of, of where the Pac-12 is, right? Stanford, of course, and, and a lot of craziness comes out of this game. Like a year ago, Stanford humiliated USC at home and sure enough, the next day, Clay Helton was fired, right? I mean, this, this game really uh, dictates a lot in terms of how good Stanford's going to be or, or where USC is at. And, you know, Rice is a quality opponent, um, but they also got three defensive touchdowns, you know? So uh, I, I like this matchup. I think it's going to be uh, extremely difficult for Lincoln Riley to go on the road uh, against a very physical Stanford team. So we'll see. As for the entirety of the Pac-12, it yes, wasn't sir. a great weekend. It wasn't a great weekend, right? It was... Oregon getting absolutely destroyed on a national um, platform. And then Utah, which I thought was the best chance, went on the road and, and kind of laid an egg, right? They, they turned it over twice inside the five-yard line and missed uh, just so many tackles, the most in, I think, a decade, Kyle Whittingham said on the defensive side of the football. But I still think they're the best team in the Pac-12. Uh, they'd have to do something unprecedented. They'd have to go and uh, run the table to be considered in the, in the uh, college football playoff conversation i just i don't think usc ultimately this year gets there i think they're going to be a team with two or more losses as for my alma mater you know they didn't they didn't look the part right their their young quarterback who was the transfer everybody was excited about was was pretty undisciplined and i i expect uh the coaching staff to have a real kind of come to jesus conversation with them that he has to stay within the confines of this offense to be successful at this level they go to camp randall this weekend on the big fox as well and uh, that could be a, a, a real, you know, welcome to the Division One football uh, for the young quarterback. They're 17-point underdogs, I think, at, at the time of uh, uh, yesterday. So um, I, I like their head coach. I like where they're headed. I like how they're playing defense, which I think will keep them in a lot more games this year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm excited for Pac-12 football. I, I, I am. I'm excited for it every week. I have Oregon-BYU next weekend, which I think is going to be a heck of a matchup, a heck of a game. Uh, in Eugene, 
Uh, so excited for that too. No, I hear you, and I don't blame you for wanting to talk up Pac-12 football. Um, I, you know, if I went to school there, I'd want to do it as well. But I, I have, I have a, I fear they're on the outside looking in, sir. I, I really do. That this is this is I all. Even think, yeah, Rich. I even think with 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 Utah, if they were to run the table in the uh, in the conference, which has never happened before in the history of, of the Pac-12 conference to win all nine conference games. If they were to do that and be a twelve and one conference champion, I still think they'd probably be on the outside looking in. I really do. So I, I agree with you on that. It's just the narrative around the Pac-12. Unless it's USC, I think uh, they're not going to get the benefit of the doubt. Ryan Leaf here on the Rich Eisen Show. Who's your Super Bowl pick? I, everyone on game day morning chose the Bills. Uh, do you choose them too? What do you got? Well, I, I did until I saw that graphic. Ah. Um, <laughs> when wow. everybody in the world is going with something. Right. Uh, I was with you, though. You were turning about, I have, you know, Bills are my, are my team to win the Super Bowl. Right. I, 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 I do feel that way. I don't think they win tomorrow night. I think they get beat by the defending world champs. That's possible. I also want the answer around how the offseason was addressed by Buffalo because the last we saw of them was the coaching staff absolutely just uh, with egg all over their face, all over their face. How did they address it? Did they address it in the locker room? Because they've never addressed it really publicly. They have to have addressed it in the locker room because this is the first time they're going out. What happens when the pressure and the stress of that moment happens again? Do they fold like they did in Kansas City? Or do they overcome and become the best team in football this year? I think great value uh, teams out there, I think, are the Chargers, the Ravens, and the Vikings, to be honest with you. They, there's, there's some real interest in those three teams, in my opinion. So, But the Bills, I hate to do it. I, I think that they're the best team in football. They are. We'll see how they respond. They are. I mean, even last year when they wound up um, 13 seconds shy of beating the Chiefs in a playoff game that we're going to be talking about for years to come, certainly because – we're going to see Allen and Mahomes go at it with each other for a decade more, knock on wood for, for those fan bases and those players and franchises. But they the, the Bills started last season with an awful loss at home to Pittsburgh, making us wonder what the hell was going on with them. And then everything, you know, they, they ripped off all those wins. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that locker room, everything that I hear from, from that spot, they, they're, they're hunky-dory. And that quarterback is somebody that they're going to follow into – into the gates of you know what man they're, they're ready to go uh, I'm, and that's why I, I i fully believe they're the best team and that if they execute when the game is on the line that's a large if based on their last uh game uh, i think they are the team to beat who's the team to beat in the nfc for you you mentioned the vikings yeah. are, you, are you taking them I, I, to win the nfc though i kind of like i kind of like what they're what they're capable of doing uh you know on the nfc side of things um you know, Green Bay is, the, I think, the, the easy easy pick in all of this. Um, but, you know, I, I just don't know if there's an NFC team out there that can really vie for a championship this year, except for maybe the, the Rams uh, against an AFC opponent. Um, we'll, we'll see. Right now I'm going uh, to go with the guy that, uh, that I don't think a lot of people expect, and I'm, I'm going to go with the Vikings finding a way to get there under new head coach Kevin Damn. O'Connell and, and – uh, and uh, Kirk Cousins. All right. I, I love that offense. I think the defense has improved. I think there's just a new lease on life there in, in Minnesota. So that that's a that's a great value one for me. I don't think they win the Super Bowl by any means. I, I think whoever gets there from the AFC ultimately does get it done. Ryan, thanks for the time. Thanks always for sitting in this chair. Uh, congrats on your new gig. We'll be watching. You take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, TJ. Thank you, Mike and Heller. Uh <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> you the man. Hey. Thanks for the call. Hey, buddy. Thanks for the take call, care, brother. Ryan. Take care, brother. That's Ryan Leaf at Ryan Leaf on Twitter. You should follow him. I do as well. Right here on the program.